So, good morning everyone. Myself Srikar and I am Antex second year student and working under the guidance of Dr. Jain sir. And uh, today we are going to see power quality disturbance classification using artificial intelligence which is session 2 which is continued from the previous session in which Amitabh has already discussed regarding how to do the same classification using uh, you are using ANN and in which initially you will be using uh, a DSP technique for analysis from which you will extract the features and from the extracted features you are going to select the features and use ANN and do the classification. But uh, without using this entire three sets of different procedures you can directly use the same using deep learning. How to do that we will see in this session. Okay, And uh, coming to the in introduction you already know. Uh, from the previous sessions, many sessions they have uh, discussed regarding power quality disturbances, what are different type of disturbances and uh, what is the need for the classification of the disturbances. Okay, and uh, for, for, for the same we, we need to use an AI procedure for this uh, classification in which we will see in this session. And artificial intelligence is a part of machine learning and de deep learning is another subset of machine learning in which it uses an ANN And artificial neural network I have already introduced in deep learning it has automatic so by adding those things it has automatic feature extraction and selection and last time someone asked the regarding the software frame networks which are uh, tensorflow torch pytorch and cache uh, excluding matlab there are also other software platforms which support python and c c++ in which you can do the same coding and uh, simply uh, ann versus dll i have shown in this simple uh, figure See, in uh, re regarding ANN, if the, there is input, uh, we need to do the manually feature extraction and feature selection. In uh, Amitabh's thing, he has shown one D DSP technique in which he, he used uh, DSP technique to extract some features. And from extracted features, he used some feature selection procedure in from which he selected some useful features for that. For, for his problem. And for after getting the useful features, he used the classification using ANN. After classification, after uh, extracting the features and selection, you use the classification using ANN. Then you will get result. But for deep neural network, there is no need for uh, our manual feature extraction, feature selection. It will automatically do feature extraction and fee, 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 feature selection. Anyway, it will do the classification. And uh, different uh, types of activation functions, the same, uh, what are the same set of activation functions are required for ANN, same will be used for uh, d d deep learning also, but, yes, yes, yes. yes. Passing through the tail, across the eyes of the tail, 
he will understand. In future, once he will ask, how he will ask. What is this? He will say this is in Mumbai. Can you go back to this? What is the use of this? So, whatever training means, he is directing. In letter of feedback, so what is this? Similarly, neural network also is being advanced on the pattern. So, it is required the input as well as the output for the training only. Testing only. There are two things training and testing. So, while developing the neural network, they will need to train the neural network by showing input as well as output. So, it will learn. If x1 is 1 and x2 is 1 and y is 0, 2. If x1 is 3, y1 is 5, x2 is 5, y will be a. So, like it will learn. No calculation. x1 this, x2 this, y will be this. x2 this, x1 this, x2 this, y will be this. So, if we will show x1 value varying from 1 to 1000, x2 value varying from 1 to 1000, y will be output it will learn. Now, during the testing, there is no need to give the output. Just give the input in which is the output. It will learn to spread. But, what is it? If x1 and x2 will vary between 1 to Similarly, so here this neural network will be trained just by showing the picture. In the way of picture, yes. okay. the SEV will be happy. Maybe we will be the same. So, we will be able to do it. So here it will directly given by the showing the pictures. On the Bali case, we get about data set limit. So now this is you can convert the picture into data also. So you can convert the picture at first or you see the real picture. So this is the simplest way. There may be some problem in between there, but directly show the different kind of picture. Like learning in any kind of picture matching with this area will pass. So then I need to what is this problem? How do I? So now you understand the very well. And uh, learning st strategies, learning strategies are also similar to the ANN in which there are three types of learning which are unsupervised learning, supervised learning and re reinforcement learning. Generally in uh, deep learning we will only use supervised learning and uh, co combined with reinforcement learning it is generally called transfer learning means generally we, we will be having a deep uh, learning model which is already trained and uh, uh, we will retrain it using fewer samples so that we, we, we can easily train the model because in deep learning the disadvantage is it will take lot of time to train but if you are using large number of samples again it will take more amount of time so to uh, reduce this uh, kind of problems the deep, deep learning models are, were already trained and using pre-training uh, using retraining we will train that uh, deep learning model using supervised learning generally and uh, regarding back uh, Or no. Okay, and uh, uh, here I have to say that this is a similar input and this is an output. Okay, then we are either training or testing the input and the system, and after the processing time, we will get the output. But while training, uh, we may not get the uh, our required output. So we will assess it to what is the required output in form of uh, transfer learning.
Yeah, from input to the output, it is non normal working of the system, and when it is coming back to adjust the weights, this procedure is called back propagation, in which we will give the desired output. So, this is generally uh, done in the time of training, and uh, this desired output which we are giving in the in MATLAB is called the input. And for this, the flowchart is almost same as the Amitabh one, but uh, the thing is, after ma ma mathematical modeling of procedures, we will generate images and uh, the after the image generation, we will reset the image as per our model requirement. In uh, deep learning, there are different models for uh, deep learning in which uh, uh, the image input, whatever we are going to give the input to that model, is of a uh, different uh, the different sizes. So, depending on the model requirement of the image, set, we are going to rescale the image and we will give that image to the input for training and validation. And after once the uh, deep learning model trains, we, we, we will get a trained model for which we will give the input and we, we will get the uh, desired output. It works actually in MATLAB. See, in in MATLAB, if you go to apps, there will be uh, in machine learning and deep learning. There is deep network designer. If you click on this deep network designer, the deep network designer apps opens as shown. First, it will be uh, there won't be any model here. If you go to new, see, you can already load some pre-trained models which are Squeeznet, Google Net, ResNet. These are all pre-trained models which are already available with MATLAB. Different types of deep learning. deep learning models. Okay, and here I am using Squeeznet model here. Open. This is this Quiznet model in which it has uh, 68 layers and it is 18 layer deep. Okay. And see here you can see the input which is uh, input image layer. Here you can see the size. 227, 227, 3. So 
one is height and width what is the third dimension in image anyone can say what is the third dimension of the image first two are width and height okay and what is the third dimension of image have you any idea regarding that image if you are interested in image processing you may have the idea what is the third dimension of the image any idea the third dimension is uh, color channel means how many colors it is using the generally it will be three or five but in matlab what are we are using models we are using only three channel input which is rgb red green and black and uh, these are different uh, types of uh, uh, blocks which we can drag and we can use it in uh, while uh, designing already i have taken a pre-trained model but if you are going to design a new model you can use this to toolbox here uh, available to design the model uh, in which this is uh, the second layer is convolution layer in which they, 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 there will be particular size of filter the filter will always scale over our uh, current image and it will and it will extract features i have already told uh, told you in the ppt see in the ppt for uh, deep learning it deep learning is a class of machine learning uh, the higher level of concepts are defined from lower level ones see first it will extract the lower level features and using that lower level features it will always extract higher level features from low level to high level while predicting it can predict from high level to low level okay and uh, uh, to i said that when there are many uh, uh, hidden layers there will be a problem of saturation when using non linear activation functions to avoid that has, has, has saturation problem, we are going to use this uh, max pooling one, in which it will uh, it will group the same kind of things, and so for, from that it will extract the re relevant samples from the out uh, for, for, from the samples inside. And uh, uh, apart from max pooling, we will also use for uh, fire relay one. Generally, max pooling is used, and there is also one more one. drop out this the, max pooling is used to extract the uh, uh, relevant features and drop out is used to uh, say, say, separate the unwanted features these two are used so that the saturation problem can be overcome when there are many different hidden layers so, 68 layers but it is 18 layer deep here every block is considered a layer in the the deep learning model and every node is considered as a hidden layer so number of hidden layers are number of layers in depth of that model and uh, generally these are the pre-trained models and in any pre-trained model there will be a large set of convolution or fully connected layers this thing convolution and fully connected layers in last set you can see here there are number of filters are thousand here see means it is uh, pre-trained to uh, select thousand number of uh, di di different classes but here I am only having four classes so I will remove this layer here and add a new layer here okay in new layer and my classes are only four classes which I am going to classify and filter I will keep minimum so that I can get maximum uh, uh, resolution and regarding uh, learning uh, last learning rate should be higher than initial learning rate so i am going to keep bias learn factor and uh, weight learn factor around 10 okay and connect it okay and classification classification is already output size is 1000 but here i need only 4 so i will delete this and i will add new classification here and after doing this if our model is correct or not we can uh, we can always analyze whether our design is correct or not let me analyze whether this model whatever i have designed is correct or not if there is any error if the if, uh, inputs and outputs are not matching if the number of classes are not matching it will always show 
and it we can uh, directly we can adjust after uh, knowing the what type of error and where, where it is occurring see there are no errors okay and now the model is ready for us but for to give the image input we need to give images from here for that we will first generate the images okay for voltage interruption i am uh, same the whatever the code amitabh has used i am going to use the same code but i am plotting that image and i am saving the image is the additional thing okay i am starting the program and see you can see the images will get saved in this column then I have not used this total window. Only I have used this small window over here. And for that, I have to write additional set of code also in the program. See, T1 equals to title layout, and I have given the size of that in inches. Can anyone tell why I have done this? See, in this, I have already told we need to do image rescaling. While image rescaling is the size of any image is larger. And when we are saving image to a small image, la um, large amount of set of data will get wasted. So instead of wasting that set of data and uh, uh, not finding that data, I am initially taking my image closer to the observer. I can't take the exact It is important that when you are using any neural network, uh, using images, you select an image which is almost nearer to the scale in which you are going to do the classification. Or else, when you are resizing directly in MATLAB, if you are resizing using other softwares, I am not sure. But in MATLAB, most amount of data is lost because MATLAB is matrix laboratory. It will use always anything in, in the form of matrices. Okay, a large amount of matrices. Will leave some data so that we can convert large size to smaller size. So I am using this smaller size one so that I can easily get uh, my required output. Okay, I have generated. See how many images I have generated. Ninety-nine, hundred, one ten images I have generated. One ten images I have generated here. Okay, and uh, voltage interruption I have uh, see I have generated one ten images, and normal also I will generate. Once you develop a model, you can just 
Yes, in ma in ma MATLAB, anything is regarding matrices. Images are also it will read in the form of matrices. Yes, exactly. See, uh, apart from you are copying the same image and pasting, then only you will get same values. No two images will be the same. Even they may look similar, but they will never be same. Same in your case of a project also. If you are doing plagiarism check, if you are generating your own images, even if it looks the same, it will not say it is plagiarized. Because you are generating your own image. Never two images will be the same. Okay. I have generated for voltage interruption and normal. Then I will generate for SAG. <laughs> same. It will never be. Apart from you are copying and pasting the same image. So direct comparison, no one will do in math because it will never be seen. But neural network, you can train it. If the if the two images are same, then then, then it will show the other two images. See, if you are having already data, you can load it into MATLAB and plot it, and you can save it as image. Generally, from different outside sources, we are going to get sampled data. See here, I am using this uh, sampling frequency same Amitabh we has used right, 3.2 kilohertz. The same sample frequency. If you are unable to see, Now you can see sampling frequency I have used 3.2 kilohertz. Generally, for sampling frequency, I don't know whether Amitabh has introduced or not. Use sampling frequency of 3.2 kilohertz. Yes. 
Yes, but practically whatever power quality and electricity ha having a hardware thing, they'll they'll be using up to 3.2 kilohertz uh, ah, sampling. Okay. Yeah. Classification only classification. Just doing the classes with a large kind of power quality issue in the system. Just after taking the maybe we can classify. Accordingly, the other people in the system will be more. Yes. See, see, Vinay, generally, generally in an overall view, if it is ha harmonic disturbance or other type of disturbance, one deep learning model can classify. If it is harmonic disturbance, give the same signal to another deep learning model in which it will again classify what are the different types of harmonics in uh, are occurring in the harmonic disturbance. Yes. Use two. Yes. Deep learning model. Yes, formula. we will provide the mathematical formula to that and it will know and based on that it will calculate what type of harmonics are occurring in the signal. It, it will be an, a, another dedicated one. So the, the, there will be two deep learning models which, which will be interconnected. Only for harmonics if you are going to classify inbuilt because harmonics also there are many cases and different type, types of structures. If you are giving ev everything to the original one, it will have many classes and it will take too much time. So, uh, better than that, you give general harmonics case for this and after that, uh, based on the result, you analyze whatever the harmonics are coming in another model. So, I have generated 100 images, 110 images for all these things. Now, after generating the images, what I am going to I'm going to use SwissNet, so I'm going to resize the images. Okay. And uh, input size is 227 here. See, this input size I came to know from from the network designer. I have already shown right in the image input layer. This 227 by 227. Okay, the same thing I have given, and I'm going to resize. I am resize. Okay, and I am going to resize all these images into uh, required format from 1 to 110. It is resizing or not, you can go to folder and you can see. Space net. See? Resizing 90, 91, 96, 100, 110. It has resized all images. These are resized images. Okay. Now image has been resized. So what I'm going to do is in these after uh, resizing images for testing purpose, I will uh, take out some random 10 samples from every case. One. Okay, some random 10 samples I have selected. I'm going to remove them. Voltage interruption I have selected. And voltage normal also I will select some samples. Randomly I'm selecting. There is no required thing. Randomly you select. 10 samples I have selected.
from cells swell also I will select random 10 samples selecting for testing sir testing I am removing these uh, samples from uh, training samples these samples will be used for testing no no I will provide the training so I have removed these samples yes 10 10 10 10 percentage General. Generally, for accurate training and for uh, good testing, you will take the test samples as 10 percentage of total samples. So I have taken 100, 10 percentage is 10. So I am using those 10 images for testing. Yeah. So see here. In ha in hardware regarding hardware, the deep learning models were already implemented using FBGA platform. FBGA platform is already implemented. It has to be verified, implemented, and done. Okay. Hardware, whatever you need to do, hardware, whatever you need to do is after taking the uh, uh, sampling data, how to feed that sample data in form of images to the uh, given FPGA model. That is, that will be your hardware requirement, not FPGA model for deep learning. It's already there for FPGA model regarding deep learning. Only the interface from power system to this FPGA model, the interface model. Huh. See, here you can see export and generate code. Whatever you are having, you can generate code for this model directly into the MATLAB. Yes. Now I am giving the input data which is tra training data. And see, training is divided into two types training and validation. Okay. First, I will give you training data. Yes. Yeah, we'll give for training and this is for validation. For training, it will go from here to here, and for validation, it will come here. Yes, feedback. So, training data, we are going to select this folder. Okay, and here it will ask. See, in but validation, validation training data, but you you can uh, uh, directly split from the data source itself. Or else, if you are uh, uh, differentiating two different sets of data into different folders, you can also specify the folder. I here I am just splitting from the training data itself. Thirty percentage. So hundred percentage, thirty percentage means seventy and thirty, right? See. I will show you 30 percentage here import and class labels will be the folder names see 
okay class labels will be the folder names and the size of uh, number of images will be 70 for training data same you can see for validation also 30 samples for validation training and validation okay and some random samples also you can see random samples different random samples you can see here okay now for training in training you uh, training options I have already told you learning rate, initial learning rate should be very less and final rate, learning rate should be more. So initial learning rate, it, default learning rate is 0 0.01. This is for large data sets. We are not going that much large data sets. So we need to keep very small learning rate. Okay. And uh, validation frequency. Validation frequency will be done for one approach. Here I'm using four classes. So one approach consists of four iterations. So validation frequency should be four. Maximum number of approaches 30, it is fine. Minimum batch size. See, minimum batch size is number of uh, training data images, which are 70 here. Remaining things are uh, default values, no, no, no need to change them. And after that, you need to click on train. Now while it is training, I will make this uh, testing samples, okay? Interruption. Okay, these are an in interruption. Normal. No sir, it will, it will take another 15 or 20 minutes. In between, I am uh, sorting out the samples. This, uh, because I am using program to check all samples at once, the name should be in an alphabetical order or ascending order. So that I am naming voltage interruption 1 to 10. I will name again then. Because I have taken ran random samples here. I'm re renaming every sample here. Simply.
ट्वेंटी इट हैज ऑलरेडी रीच दी फाइनल इटरेशन The model has already reached the final iteration, and uh, out of thirty approaches, there there will be four iterations per, per approach, and number of total iterations will be one twenty four into thirty one twenty. Okay, and after uh, training that, you export this model, export the train network and results. So this this train network and result will be exported into the MATLAB. Here you can see. This is the our required one cross one DAG network model. This network model you are going to save. Okay. Save as. Okay. After saving that, we are going for testing. testing program is quite simple in which we will uh, initially load that uh, pretend model whatever we have obtained okay and after uh, loading the model we are going to read one image and we will feed that image and we will uh, uh, classify that image using this inbuilt function of classify okay see i have given here image voltage normal so output should be voltage normal for for me if it is accurately testing it let us see whether it is accurately testing or not the given image is a voltage normal uh, disturbance having probability of 0.996 so it is ac uh, accurately predicting it is voltage normal uh this is for in case of single single images if i am giving commonly 10 images as per one class i have written another program in which it will uh, directly show how many images it is belong into a class and how many it is accurately classifying and how many are not accurately classifying we will see this program also now Voltage normal is accurately out of the ten images, and error is zero. Going for accuracy. Gun classification. Because see here, accuracy itself is going for hundred percentage. So it is accurately classifying whatever images are required. From this, we can do that uh, classification like this in this way. क्लासिफिकेशन हो गया ठीक है सर ये सिंगल इमेज का है सर सिंगल इमेज में अभी मैंने इधर देखो सर इमेज रीड में इन इमेज रीड एफ डी पी टू स्क्रीज ने टेस्टिंग वोल्टेज नॉर्मल एंड वोल्टेज नॉर्मल आई हैव गिवन सम नॉर्मल वोल्टेज टू इट आई एम जस्ट इनिशियली टेस्टिंग फॉर सिंगल इमेज ओके एंड इट शुड गिव मी द आंसर ऑफ the image is having uh, the given image is of so and so disturbance we here it should show in so and so to show voltage normal so i'm going to run this program now the given image is of voltage normal disturbance it has shown yeah voltage normal yes sir. even if you can write label See in the label, it will store store the answer. Voltage normal. Ah, huh. disturbance. Yes, sir. Okay. We'll see testing. We'll go for sag.
given images of voltage side disturbance and uh, it, this is regarding single image but if you are uh, uh, inputting all set of images and you are going to get the resultant output you can also see that in case of this program Regarding all uh, voltage normal interruption charge 12, charge and 12, we, we have given 10 input image, it is accurately uh, detecting 10, not accurately 0. Because in here, uh, while training itself, we got error of uh, final accuracy of 100 percentage. Now you see, it's over. This computer is working. It only took two minutes to train. Sir. So, thank you very much. If you have any queries, you can ask them, right? And then, after the end of the video, we will have a question. 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 We will have a question